On today's Saturday news, Seth Rollins tears his MCL and meniscus. Pete Dunne is back. We've got another update on the status of AW superstar Kenny Omega. And WWE announced details about Elimination Chamber. Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? My name is Phil Chambers. I am back after breaking my face. And I'm joined by Gareth Morgan to talk all things wrestling news. But we've got some sad news up first. Yes, a bit, uh, it's one that we kind of all sense something a bit bad maybe on the horizon after like we've, we'd heard of Seth Rollins being hurt in that match against Jinder Mahal. It all went a bit quiet, suspiciously quiet for WWE. And now uh, Fightful Select, as always really, have come through with a, a, a report uh, just explaining what has happened to Seth. And it appears that he has sustained a torn MCL and partially torn meniscus. So what does this mean for Seth Rollins now heading on the road to WrestleMania? It was looking like he was probably in with a really good chance of main event in one of the nights possibly against cm punk uh, mm. what does that mean like uh, what kind of like what was the recovery time for this type of in injury well uh, pw insider explained that if he really pushed himself after having surgery if he does have surgery on the meniscus he could probably get back between three and four weeks which is pretty rapid if he does want to yeah. like force himself back into that uh, that picture but more commonly it's a four to six uh, week kind of recovery time for this type of injury which, which would still put him in a position to obviously be at mania and wrestle and uh, be fit but it's not really sure right now if he would be involved in any of the, the special events headed into mania like your elimination chambers obviously the royal rumble is just about to happen uh, it's not really the end of the world you can be you can probably work around that like if, if, they, if they want to keep the world title on seth uh, before wrestlemania or going into wrestlemania it is also worth noting the wrestle votes popped up on twitter after this like or around the time that this was uh this was noted uh, they said that i'm told the plan of uh, as of now sorry is for seth rollins to address his health and future as world heavyweight champion this monday night on raw uh, dave Meltzer also uh he kind of mentioned in his daily update that he does on uh like the wrestling observer kind of site uh, he said that as of yesterday afternoon the plan was still to go with rollins and versus CM Punk and WrestleMania 40, but obviously that could change. It just depends on how quickly Seth recovers and just how this situation changes. And it's probably gonna change a lot in the next couple of weeks. A lot will become clear on Monday by the sounds of it. If Seth goes into this and maybe maybe they fold this into like a storyline. It's like, oh, I've, I've been carrying this this world title and raw on my back for so long. I've, I've done my knees it again. Ugh, blah, blah, blah. Like, it might be one of those kind of things. Or he might just come out there and say, you know what? I, I, I'm, I, it's looking like it's going to be longer than expected. I'm probably going to have to maybe vacate the title and then go in a different direction. There's a lot. They, they, they seriously just... It's made a lot of people go, what in the heck is going to happen? It's made it slightly more fascinating in a weird, morbid way. But yeah. just we're just wishing the best for Rollins. I hope he gets fit as soon as. Yeah, absolutely. It sucks timing-wise. But it's, mm -hmm. they're in a good position like for this to happen mm -hmm. now, really. Like, and he can get better for WrestleMania, in theory, like so long as it's, there's not like more behind this that we don't um, mm -hmm. know already. Um, so... The Royal Rumble pay-per-view kind of sells itself because it's the Royal Rumble. It has the Royal Rumble match on it. And Elimination Chamber is in a very similar position. It has the Elimination mm. Chamber matches on it, which are the big draws for that card. Plus, it's in um, Australia, so you've got, like, Rhea Ripley and things that'll mm. help with that. Like, both those shows don't necessarily need a Seth Rollins on that card in order to sort of sell the show uh, and keep things moving forward towards um, WrestleMania. So, like, timings-wise, it's not the worst obviously it's not great but like there's plenty more that you can do and also wwe have done a really good job of building up challenges for seth rollins at the minute where you could easily go and do feuds that are kind of for whoever's gonna fight seth rollins when he's ready like a number one contendership kind of feud instead to kind of take the place of the sort of world title feud picture mm -hmm. on like tv and things like that so They've got like a lot of options that are available mm -hmm. and hopefully it is just the sort of four to six weeks and it doesn't mean that Seth's going to miss WrestleMania because obviously that would change plans completely. Like that would be a completely different thing. Um, but we're just going to have to wait and see what he says on this Ro Monday Night Raw, I guess. But yeah, like we say, just get well soon to Seth mm -hmm. Rollins. No matter what, it always sucks when someone gets injured. Yeah, and he's had a lot of bad luck with his knees, hasn't he, over the years? So yeah, Always around absolutely. Mania season, isn't it, as well? It's just oof, yeah, annoying. Um, but speaking of Mania season, we're going to be at WrestleMania. Sorry, Gareth, you're not. This is really harsh when I have to do this. But we are doing a live show uh, on WrestleMania weekend. Whatculture.com forward slash tickets. They are available right now. They've 
the VIP tickets have already sold out. So if you want the other tickets, go get them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's going to be on the Sunday, April the 7th, just before night two of WrestleMania. It's going to start at midday. So it gives you like plenty of time to get to WrestleMania after our show has finished. And um, we can't like guarantee like a meet and greet with everyone cause just because of the sort of numbers in the place that we're at. But we'll be around. So mm-hmm. if we're around, come say hi. Uh, and it'll just be a good time. The whole team's going to be there apart from Gareth. Sorry, Gareth. <laughs> I'm going to fly out. I'm going to fly out and I'm just going to just gonna take a like if you want to fly out you can come tomatoes and i'm just gonna have you dancing around the stage trying to dodge yourselves that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make a point of it every year this every, every damn year, year it's really hard just this. just With flying the flag right at there. home just just don't don't listen to this bit anymore but yeah, yeah whatcomes.com just... forward slash tickets do go get your tickets while they are still available uh but moving over pete dunn uh, he's back as Pete Dunn. He's no longer Butch. Uh, he officially changed his name back to Pete Dunn on SmackDown. Obviously, there was teases last week about where that this was kind of going to happen. Uh, he teamed with Tyler Bate to take on Pretty Deadly, and Pete Dunn got the win in that match. Now, Fightful Select had a bit of a report about this before it happened on SmackDown, um, saying that it was likely going to happen, which he obviously did, uh, but mentioned that sort of Butch as a name change had quite a lot of pushback within WWE, not just sort of um, the fan base, uh, when it first happened, saying that a lot of people thought it was a lot too close to Bushwhacker Butch, uh, who was already a sort of Hall of Famer. Um, but I like personally think the Butch name actually probably helped Pete Dunne in the long run. I don't think he was... Yeah high up in uh, Vince McMahon's sort of ideas of who to push yeah. back then. And obviously it was a Vince McMahon thing to change his name to Butch and uh, put him within the boiling boots. But I think being in that stable helped him to sort of build a bit of character that he might not have had before. Um, he got a lot of TV time, got over with the fans, um, was paired with like a Seamus, so he can learn a hell of a lot from a guy like Seamus. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's offered him a lot. And now that he's kind of done what you can through the... Um, through the Bowling Boots stable, and now you've gone back and you've changed the name back to Pete Dunne, and you got a great reaction on SmackDown. Hopefully, you can capitalize that on that and sort of use this to to go forward on the main roster. So I think I don't think the Butch name was as bad as a lot of people thought it was at the beginning, and I think a lot of people just kind of got used to it in the end and yeah. played up to it as well, which I definitely think helped. I think yeah, it, it, it was one of those strange things where people rather quickly just got used to. It. I, I remember when I, I watched yeah. um, a WWE event at the O2 just after I think it was after WrestleMania 38, and I think he was getting ready to come in and dressed up obviously as Butch. He was like he was like stood near one of the entrance ways to do a run in, and he was getting himself geared up. And I went to the bathroom because I was clearly super engaged in the match that was going on in the ring. And I walked past and everyone was going, "Hey Butch, hey Butch!" And just in my head, I was like, "It's Pete Dunne, man. That's Pete Dunne right there." I was like, it just felt so odd at the time. So I'd, yeah, but I'm glad. I'm glad we're back in the the Dunne era. I'm glad that. Butch is done. That is just finished. And I'm super intrigued about what we're going to see now with the Tyler Bates stuff going forward. They can have like a nice little tag team storyline for a little bit and then eventually turn on each other and we can have some yeah. epic matches. Oh, I'm Always. so excited. The commentators put him over massively in this as well. Like the sort of name change and everything is sort of mm-hmm. about him, like bringing back the Bruiser Weight gimmick and stuff. Yeah. Like they put him over massively. Yeah, remember who you are kind of stuff. And he's, yeah, Pete he, Dunne's a badass, so I'm excited about that. But speaking of badasses, speaking of people that we really want to see come back as soon as possible, but as healthy as possible, is Kenny Omega, right? We've got to talk about Kenny Omega again, because he last month it was announced that he obviously had been diagnosed with diverticulitis. So he was in hospital, and it was just really concerning. Like, we love Kenny, and we just wanted to make sure he's just back on his feet as soon as possible. And uh, Meltzer has now noted in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter um, that the information was actually so bad at the time that he was rushed into hospital that uh, he wasn't able to head in for surgery like so they weren't able to operate on him but as of last week he's still not had surgery so that's that's quite intriguing um he says it'll likely be around seven weeks before the decision is made on on whether he does actually require surgery and whether they're going to go forward with that it kind of depends on how he's healing how how this how the I don't really know the ins and outs of diverticulitis and what needs to happen before the surgery, all that kind of stuff, but they'll know more over the next couple of weeks. And um, if he does go in for surgery, though, that would mean a significantly longer spell on the sidelines. So 
Meltzer really specified in this in this little like note that he put in the Observer that there's no time frame on when he will return at this point. It has been said that he's been advertised for the March 20th AEW show in Toronto. And that's in Canada, Ontario, Canada. But then Meltzer was quick to kind of go, hey, it's probably not going to be there. <laughs> it's probably going to be a hospital for that boy. So yeah, or, or at least recovering, whatever he's going to be doing, he will not be there. So if you aren't going to go to those tapings, don't get your helps up too much. I mean, he could just make a miraculous comeback. It's Kenny Bloody Omega. He can do whatever he wants yeah. but right now just just kind of tip your expectations a little bit um yeah he's i don't know it's a tough one he's had so much time on, like out over the last like couple of years obviously through injury suspension all these things it's just you want to see an extended run of kenny just being kenny again not being wrapped up in all this nonsense tag team trios whatever it is i just want to see kenny just have a little run not wrestling each and every week because the man's body has been destroyed evidently over the last like couple of years but just getting a chance to see kenny be kenny again but right now let's make sure he, he just recovers as, as swiftly as possible and he's back doing what he what he does best sooner rather than later yeah absolutely not a lot to add to that one other than yeah just get well soon to kenny omega mm -hmm. however long it takes uh, I hope he yeah, comes back 100% fully healthy and, like you say, can get back to the Kenny Omega that we all love. Mm -hmm. um, but moving over, back to WWE, uh, an elimination chamber. And they've kind of um, well teased or mentioned that the start time for elimination chamber will be start time in Australia and it will be live in America at that time. So it's going to be a very early start if you Americans are going to be wanting to watch this. How very sad for you all. Oh, no, oh, a live no. show. It's so, it's so early in the morning. What are we going to do? Um, it's going to be at 5 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, which is 10 a.m. in the UK. That's what a what a lovely morning that'll be. Just wake up breakfast. and pop on the wrestling and some breakfast. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be for lovely for us. Great for us in the UK. Mm. Sorry, America. You're just going to have to yeah. suck it up. For once now I'm, I'm you know, see how you like it zero God sympathy it. zero sympathy for it we've done our time Absolutely all right not. we deserve you a breakfast show God damn it. No match is announced yet but they have revealed the poster which is just Rhea Ripley looking like an absolute badass uh, but obviously it'll have the Elimination Chamber matches on it it'll be in Australia it's in front of loads of people it's gonna be a lot of fun Yep, I'm just excited to have my breakfast and watch wrestling live. That, that, that's cool. I, I, we've not had that Lovely. a lot in my 29 years. That's what I want. I want to see it. And it's going to be Elimination Chamber. It's one of my favourites, really. I, just, I love that match. So I'm giddy. I'm in for it. Thank you, Australia Elimination Chamber. I salute you. Absolutely. Uh, but yes, reminder, whatculture.com forward slash tickets to get your tickets for our live show in America. And you can follow us over on Twitter. You can follow me at Fill My Chambers. And you can follow Gareth at gmorgan04. And you can click this video right here to continue on your YouTube journey. Watch all the videos from us on our channel because that's what YouTube likes you to do. But most importantly, have yourselves a bloody good day. Bye-bye.